Spotlight. I'm Ed Cody. We're here at Freeport High School, one of the most successful athletic programs in the WPIAL. And I'm here with a guy who heads up this program, Athletic Director Sean Stevenson. Uh, Sean, is your job harder or easier with all the success here at Freeport Athletics? Well, making playoffs and getting extra games for the kids, it, it does make it longer, but it's, it's re really rewarding. It's enjoyable to see the kids, the coaches succeed through the years. Uh, I do put a lot of time in. I live close, which is nice. I am from the community. I uh, graduated from Freeport, so it is enjoyable to see our kids and families in the community have success here with our coaches. This is such a rich, a successful athletic program with great tradition. I'm not saying just going back a few years. I'm talking about going back to day, well, when I was in high school. I don't want to say the 92 years when you started, but you've always been successful here. What, what's the key to this great success in your athletic program? I think you, you can start with the students themselves. we we got great students here. We have great coaches here. Uh, our coaches stay with our programs uh, the whole way from junior high up to high school. Uh, we have coaches that have been here for 17 years, 12 years. Uh, minimum is probably four or five being head coaches. We have coaches that coach uh, high school programs and coach uh, junior high programs too. I, you know, I can name only a few other high schools where they have success in almost every uh, sport and, and Freeport certainly is one of them and that's a testament to the great tradition that that you have here what's the hardest thing about your job uh, just making sure we get everybody you know on on time everybody in place uh, getting the commitment that we have a lot of fall sports are tough uh, you, you have games every night sometimes double headers with volleyball and soccer uh, winter it lets up a little bit but you always got the weather with the, that and then spring you're back in uh, with a full load too with lacrosse and baseball softball um, and we got track in the spring so it, it's tough all year long but you get a break here and then and Christmas is always nice to enjoy. <laughs> uh, Sean uh, how much input do you have as athletic director when there's a position op open for a head coaching spot with a sport how much input do you have? Uh, myself and uh, our principal and uh, our assistant principal, we will we will interview people and then we recommend we uh, make recommendations for the school board and the school boards do the uh, second round interviews and that. But I like to keep things. I mean, we do have a lot of people that have graduated from Freeport that are coaches here. I think that's a huge success because they know the traditions, they know what we we expect and what we want out of our program. Um, we want our we want to see our kids succeed first, and our kids are what our student body and student athletes are what make us look good here. Well, Sean, congratulations to you, Freeport Athletics, and a great, rich tradition that you have here, and much continued success in the future. Thanks. Thanks for coming to see us and interviewing our student athletes and coaches. I am here with Freeport head football coach and track coach John Gaylot. Coach, what a start to the season! A rough start. You played three of the top teams in your section. Two losses combined between North Catholic Derry and Elizabeth Forward. Elizabeth Forward undefeated. You could be right now 4-1. Uh, that game with North Catholic, of course, was a rough game, a 40-8 to loss. But you now won two in a row. You head to Deer Lakes and a chance to even your season. It's been a rough start, but it seems like you have things turned around. Yes, uh, we... Um very proud of the boys, uh, how they responded after going 0-3 at the beginning of the season. Uh, very tough teams, uh, uh, heavy at, at, there at, the, at the beginning. Um, but they, they continue to fight. And uh, big win last week against York. Uh, I think we held uh, Shove to uh, 89 yards rushing. And that was our goal, was to try to keep them under 100. Um, Made some changes uh, here and there to try to make us better on both sides of the ball and um, really starting to reap the benefits now. Coach, you, you lose that opener to Derry in overtime, 1913. Sometimes you lose a tough game like that. They say you, you lose two in one game. You had a rebound the next week against a very powerful North Catholic uh, school, and things just didn't work out for you. No, uh, no they didn't. They, um, yeah, after the the dairy loss, going to overtime and uh, having an opportunity to win it there and coming up a little bit short, um, I think it really hit us hard, uh, and we were, uh, you know, struggled the next week against North Catholic. We weren't the same. Uh, we came back against EF, and uh, I thought we played extremely well, and uh, we were we were inside, you know, the 25 going in, and um, 
you know, we had a fumble that, uh, you know, sealed the deal for us uh, to lose that one. So we, um, I, I just re responded uh, with Union Town the following week and, uh, you know, had a big win against York, uh last week. So I'm really excited about looking forward. Uh, Deer Lakes is coming up here and uh, that's going to be a very tough contest also. You have an outstanding uh, quarterback in Austin Romanchak. He's been he's close to 500 yards through your first five games. Uh, well, could be on his way to a thousand yard season. Um, you rely on him quite a bit to run your offense. Yes, I do. There, uh, him and Connor Selinger. This is their third year uh, together in the backfield, and uh, they complement each other uh, greatly. Um, Austin is just um, you know he might lose two or three yards. Uh, two or three plays in a row, but then he can he can take it 60 yards for a touchdown. He's that, that dy dynamic. Um, he just has moves that I've never seen. Um, he's not uh, a passing quarterback, um, but he just uh, he passes well enough to uh, keep defenses honest, and uh, he makes a lot of plays for us last three years uh, with his legs. Well, Coach, uh, success here at Freeport football has been a tradition, 7-2 and two last year. It seems like you can stamp that in, in a book almost every year. You had a, uh, had a really uh, proud and rich uh, football program here. Yes, um, I'm just uh, blessed to, to be able to coach here with all the history from uh, Coach King, Coach Early, Coach Keppel, uh, Coach Dillon. Um, that, that's just trying to uh, keep keep going what, what they started. Um, there's a lot of pride. Well, Coach, good luck to you this Friday at uh, Deer Lakes, and good luck to you the rest of the season. Thank you, sir. I am here with Freeport quarterback Austin Romanchak. Austin, you guys had a rough start to the season. Is talking to your coach about, about that. He got off to a tough loss with Derry, 19-13 to 13 in overtime, and then that blowout loss to North Catholic, and then you guys recouped and almost beat undefeated Elizabeth forward, losing 27-21. to 21. You've won your last two. How have you guys been able to turn this around? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we came out playing those three very good teams at the start. We have a really tough uh, conference this year, so we just wanted – our main goal was to come out and just execute and been playing the ways – been playing the way we played because the first three games we didn't play bad we played good and executed so we just wanted to come out and play strong like we've been playing well you're you're the strength of this offense you and Connor you have nearly 500 yards rushing through these first five games I know players say I don't want to think about the stats I just want to win but if you continue to your success you're averaging 8.6 yards per carry you're headed for a thousand yard season and that would mean success for the team also yeah, absolutely. Individual success is success for the whole team. So not only myself, but Connor's been doing a great job. Our receivers have really been helping us out, and obviously blocks don't get stats, but they're, they've been doing a great job down the field. So it's definitely a goal of ours to get to 1,000 yards rushing or 1,000 yards passing because that does help out the team in the end. So, When, when you look at your, your offense, uh, and all quarterbacks have special plays, what are your favorite plays that you like to hear a coach call for you? Oh, I just like, you know, I have certain run plays that I like or just any of the pass plays where I get to kind of run around and make something happen. I like those. So just about any play we have, really, it's all – he puts it a lot in our hands and we get to try and make any play we can. So they're all my favorites. How aware are, are you and the rest of your teammates of the rich football tradition here at Freeport? Definitely. We're super aware of it. We've had some great teams here in the past. I grew up watching – my brother played on some great teams, and I grew up watching all the good teams come through Freeport winning section championships and going to the playoffs. So we're very aware of it, and we like to play with physicality as we have in the past. So we're definitely aware of that and trying to keep it going. Your offense, how would you describe it? Are you more of a spread offense or a run option type offense? I think the best thing about our offense is that we can really do it do it all. I mean, we have a good line up front, where, and then we have Connor where we can really pound the run game, and our skill guys are so great on the outside where we can spread it out if we want to or even put Connor outside. So I think the best part about our offense is really that versatility we have in being able to do just about anything we can. Well, big game this week at, at Deer Lakes, a win to put you at 500 and put you in contention for a playoff spot. I want to wish you good luck in that game and the rest of these season. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
Oftentimes people talk about dynasties in sports, but Freeport has a real dynasty in volleyball with coach Tom Phillips, 297 and 31 in his 16 years, four WPL championships, four WPL finalists. So that's eight times in his 16 years they've been to the championship game. And then they had the crown last year, the crown jewel, a state championship in 2A in volleyball, the first state championship in the 92 year history of Freeport Athletics. Coach, uh, quite an accomplishment. What a great program you have here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I've been very fortunate at Freeport to be blessed with great athletes and uh, uh, great kids that really buy into your program and put forth effort. So, uh, yeah, I'm very fortunate that way. Coach, I noticed what a tough schedule. Last year you were 22-3 and three and two of your losses to undefeated Knock, which is now 30-some and 0 in their um, uh, games, and then undefeated state champions uh, North Allegheny. And you continue to play them this year. You already went against North Allegheny. You'll be going against Knock pretty soon. Why such a tough schedule? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, you learn more from losses than you do victories. Uh, and, and obviously, I don't think we, we, we don't condone losses, but we like challenges. We like to be able to, to play the best teams that are out there to challenge us and to, to show us things that we, we need to get better at. So, uh, you know, I've always done that. I've always uh, kind of reached out to uh, teams that, uh, that I felt were as good or better than us. Uh, you know, this year playing Central Valley, playing the Shannock, uh, playing North Allegheny, playing Knock, you know, good, hard challenges, you know, so, yeah. You had four All-State players last year, three of them graduated way that you have Ali Dejitas back this year. How have you been able to reload? That must tell me that uh, you have a lot of kids that take great pride in this program and working hard to get their chance. Yes, absolutely. It's it's one of those situations where, you know, I coach the middle school also. So, um, you know, you just, in our program, it's kind of like waiting your turn. And, uh, you know, we graduated Courtney Grubbs, our setter last year, who's at Teal right now. Uh, Hannah Mason, who's at St. Vincent's. Uh, you know, Mallory Stopko, uh, you know, uh, a reserve player, but uh, has uh, moved to the next uh, level and, and play in volleyball. So, you know, I, I mean, it's it's one of those situations where people are waiting in the wings to step in and, and get their opportunity. And, uh, you know, w with uh, Maddie and Sam Clark this year, you know, two great kids that uh, very athletic kids that have been waiting to fulfill that uh, setter's role. And when Courtney moved out, they moved in, and uh, you know we just kind of reload from there. So uh, it's kind of a wait your turn uh, type of procedure. But you know we have somebody like uh, the Lampus girl, Erica Lampus. She's a freshman this year, one of only three players in my 17 years here at Freeport to start a varsity game as a freshman. So uh, uh, you know those opportunities are, are there for everybody, and uh, you know it's it's. Uh, but you have to play your best players. You know, that's what it's all about. Well, Coach, you got that state championship last year. I know you missed out in the, your fifth WPAL. I'm sure the girls are focused on, on getting that fifth one for you this year. Well, yes, I, I think it's, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, one of our first goals was uh, to continue our section champ reign. And, uh, you know, I think we're well on the way to, to that right now. A, a big win against uh, Derry at home here uh, that g gave them their second loss in the conference. Uh, you know, we want that uh, this year will be 14 straight section titles for us. And, uh, you know, that's uh, one of our goals. Obviously, the WPILs, uh, you know, the, making the playoffs and, and hosting at a home game and and also I think last year we got a pretty good taste of the state playoffs um, you know but you you have to learn to put one fort in front of the other and you can't look further down the road than the next game so uh, you know that's the thing that I preach every day in practice regardless of who it is you have to respect your opponent and uh, you have to know that you are always going to get their best game. Well coach uh, good luck to you keep the dynasty rolling and we hope to see you again soon here in the future. Okay, well, thank you very much. We hope to continue, uh, you know, with that, uh, that right foot forward and, uh, you know, getting better every week. I am here with volleyball and softball star Ellie DeGitis. Ellie, what a year you had, uh, state championship in volleyball, section championship in softball. Uh, is there a sport that's your favorite? Um, no, I... I like both of them a lot. I'm actually playing softball in college at Mercier, so I just committed a couple weeks ago, but I love both sports. 
congratulations to you. Also, you were all state in volleyball. What a run you you girls had last year. You didn't win the WPIL, but you win win the state. Uh, you played some tough competitors in Knock and North Allegheny. How much is it in the mind of the girls on the team about getting back and winning that WPL championship this year? Um, it's definitely something we want to do since we didn't win it last year, and it would be good to get it back this year and also go and win the state title again. And just from winning it last year, we got the taste of winning it, so this year it would be really big to like go back to back. How much does it help you in your schedule to play teams like Knock and North Allegheny? You're 7-2 and two this year, one loss, of course, to North Allegheny. Yeah, it's huge having good out-of-section games because they prepare us for the postseason. And we know a lot of the girls on the team just from playing like club volleyball and stuff. So it's good to play against them, and it gives us a good game in preparation for offseason. Well, you're successful in both sports. Do you see yourself as a leader, the younger kids looking up to you? Yeah, I feel like I am. I'm sometimes a little quieter, but like I feel like I lead by example a lot and always motivate the younger kids. Um, why the commitment, and I know you like both sports, so why the commitment to Mercyhurst in, is it softball? Yes. Yeah, um, I really liked the coach there. She came to, like, all my tournaments this summer and really supported me, and I liked the campus and the team, and I just fell in love with everything about it. And the important thing, what are you going to study and major um, in? I'm at going to major in physical therapy. All right, that's very in interesting. Uh, what do you like to do? You're committed to two sports. Um, what do you like to do for fun when you're not playing or practicing? Um, pretty much all of my life revolves around sophomore volleyball, going to practices most of all the days of the week. So on my free time, I like to go skiing in the winter and just practically softball and volleyball other than that. I'll ask you the same question I asked Austin about knowing about the rich history and tradition of winning in, in football. How much do all of you girls, are you aware of the great success here of athletics with Freeport? There's definitely a lot of success here and we take pride in it and we go out every game to show everyone that we are really good and we show them that. Well, Allie, congratulations to you. Good luck the rest of the year. We're going to see you guys play here uh, sometime during this season. and wish you the best of luck in your career at Mercyhurst. Okay, thank you. Joining me now is three-sport star Sydney Shemansky, three-year starter in basketball, three-year starter in soccer, and a track star, not only good in track, but she was second in the 800 in the state meet last year with a time of 2.16. I don't know how you lost. She must have been beaten by an antelope. Yes, we both have very long legs and very long strides, so we compare ourselves to um, gazelles all the time, and um, it's a very good race between us. Sydney, a three-sport uh, uh, star, uh, how are you handling and juggling? You're going from soccer and then to basketball and then to track. That has to be tremendously time-consuming, and I'm sure you're probably a pretty good student, too. Yes, it is very time consuming. It's also very stressful going from one sport to the next because usually there's no gap in between. Um, it's also very hard trying to struggle between um, school and sports and academics and homework all the time. So um, I'm just getting through it and like every sport just going through. Well, uh, you've been a three-year starter in basketball and soccer, so that means yours is your junior year. You started in ninth grade? Yes, I started soccer and basketball in ninth grade, and I also went to states and Whippeals my freshman year in track as well. Is there a preference with all three sports? I know you could say you like all three equally, but is there one sport that's become your favorite? Um, yeah, like you said, I love all, all three sports equally. I've been playing basketball and soccer since I was very little, but I think soccer is my favorite. And what are you looking forward to uh, this year? You're already playing soccer. Uh, and I asked your coach, uh, football coach, uh, if you were considered to kick some extra points or field goals for them. Have you ever thought of that? Um, I actually never thought of that, but uh, I could give it some, like, I could give it a try this year <laughs> if he actually wants me to come out. So. Did you ever try to kick a football? No, I have never. You should give it a try. You know, and there are a number of girls out there already at Gateway and South Fayette who kick extra points and, and field goals. So you're only a junior. What are your aspirations uh, for the next two years, this year and next year? What are you looking forward to after high school? I'm looking forward to 
going into track this year again because like the first um, my freshman year and sophomore year I got fifth and then uh, second in states so I'm trying to keep moving my way up in states for track and that's like my main goal so I want to get far in whipules and track in, um, in states as well. And any schools that are important to you right now? Colleges? Duquesne gave like uh, showed a little interest in me for track and they I took a day visit up there and um, I was looking more forward into Duquesne because I'm interested in pharmacy and um, like the sciences and maths. So. Well Sydney you're having a great career here three sports star and you're doing outstanding in the classroom and we wish you uh, much uh, luck the rest of this year and maybe you'll get that state crown this year. Thank you I appreciate it. That does it for another segment of Spotlight here from Freeport High School. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again in the future. <laughs>